Only major injury update, like I said the other day, is, is Tajay uh, will not practice uh, today. Again, week to week, so we'll see how it goes through the week. But as today, he'll be out, and then Coburn will still be out. Um, everybody else should be relatively good to go. Might have a few guys limited in some fashion, just as normal per Wednesdays, and, and we'll see where we end up by, by the end of the week. But nothing outside of Tajay that should be any different. Is that out this week? He should be out this week. I mean, he should be out. He'll be out of practice this week and likely out for the game as well. Yeah. In terms, of, uh, one of the things we didn't touch on Monday was uh, what kind of entailed Jamal Adams being placed on a non-football injury list with the season already underway. Yeah, it's some things we're working through that that are still kind of ongoing. So I'll let that one be for now. Another, another uh, kind of personnel, or I guess coaching. You know, any any new word on, on Chris Harris and when he'll return for you guys? Um, hopefully, hopefully soon. I don't have a finite date at the moment, but hopefully soon. I guess is that a lot of extra responsibility for for Steve? Or um, I mean, it's it's you know you're down you're down manpower, so it's always more for um, for everybody involved when you take somebody out of your your normal workflow and division of labor. So, um, but we've had guys you know guys have, have handled it. Steve's coached the entire room before. Denard's involved in it and. Um, Perry Carter is here as well as one of our um, kind of seasonal interns, and he's coached the DBs in the league for for years too. So we we got people that could help pick up the slack, and then we'll welcome them back when it's time. Is there any expectation that Jamal could be elevated <laughs> off this list at some point, or is it just kind of indefinite? I think it's kind of and status quo for now. How it's how it is is how it is, and um, we'll we'll see where it, where it ends up. Brian, what's the process of marrying? A specific quarterback style mm -hmm. to the system, and and how long do you think that can take in your experience? Um, I, I think it, it's it's always a give and take process. You're trying to figure out what what they do well and um, what they show to do well, and then things that they actually say they like. Um, so it's all that stuff. We we have enough flexibility to sort of do any of the things offensively that we need to do um, to make somebody quarterback, receiver, running back feel like they're comfortable and they have enough things in their toolbox to go play football for us. So um, a lot of it you discover as you play. You know, this is my first f four or five games, I mean, really with Will. So we're, we're learning as we're going and we're building as we go. And there's things that uh, I'm discovering and things that I like and things that we'll do more of as we keep moving. So um, it's a process. It does. It's not an immediate thing. It doesn't happen, you know, in a game or two. It takes a couple of games. And, uh, you know, that part of it, I think, is just it's just a back and forth process between myself, our offensive staff, and, and the quarterback. And it's not just him. It's other guys, too, that you're trying to find what they do well and where they fit and and, and how do you best activate them in, in the scheme. So uh, it's sort of a weekly process for us. When you go back and look at some of the disconnect, I guess, for lack of a better term, in the passing game, how much of it has been ball not in the right place, how much of it has been receiver not in the right place, or and how much of it is ball not delivered on time? Uh, it's an execution. Um, it's an execution issue. There's all of that involved. You know, we're we're trying to find our footing and find our timing and, and do things as a uh, a passing game unit, which also involves the protection part of it too. Um, so I think everyone's got a hand in it, and I certainly do as well. But uh, it's it's one of those things. Whenever you're not connecting, it's usually one of those things. Whether it be a uh, a route. Depth or timing is off. Uh, the quarterback's throw is off. What they see is different than, um, you know, maybe what they thought they saw, and they go back and look at it. So there's there's a lot of things that go into it, um, but it's certainly something that we've we've spent a lot of time and effort on uh, as of late, trying to make sure we continue to refine it and get our timing down so we can have more success because uh, we need to be better in the passing game. Him needing some good things to happen for himself too. I mean, how much do you think maybe the slow starts affected his confidence and? How much does he need to be able to play through maybe a lack of it? Uh, you know, it's hard when things don't don't go. The I'm sure none of us. I certainly didn't envision us being in this particular place. And um, you know, we're going to find out you know, how resilient we are. And uh, that's all a part of it. That's part of playing quarterback in the NFL. Even when things are good, um, they're usually not always good for long. John Fox used to say, "You're sort of two games away from disaster at all times in the NFL," and it's. Um, that's just the way it is. You 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 deal with ups and downs. Um, you can't allow your confidence to get shaken. You have to be resilient. 
Uh, you're going to face criticism as a quarterback in the NFL. Um, you're going to have bad games, and you're going to have things that don't go your way. And, and how you handle those things uh, largely defines, you know, how you're able to bounce back from them. And that's just that's NFL football for quarterbacks. And um, no one's going to just come in handy confidence either. They're all trying to take it from you on top of it. So that part of it for Will is is a new is a little bit new for him. You know, being a, being the starting quarterback from the get go and having uh, an idea of what he hoped it would look like and and what uh, the reality of it is now. And uh, you have to find a way to fight through that process. Uh, it is not easy. Um, it's not easy for any of us to, to fight through negativity and to fight through uh, wavering in your confidence. But the best quarterbacks in the NFL, you know, they, they find a way to not waver. And they still believe in their ability and they believe in um, what they're doing and how they do it. And they trust that and they just keep pushing forward. So that's the best way I can describe it. Um, certainly, you know, there's if you're not playing well, your confidence dips and you have to find ways to get through that 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 lull, that, that um, slump, whatever you call it, to play better. You got here. The offense is always going to have enough plays. There's always going to be enough mm -hmm. scheme. Yep. And you've talked about, you know, some of your play calling and stuff. But g given the context of what's happened on route to one and four, how do you contextualize that? Um, you know, learning about our football team and learning what guys do well and, and what positions we can put them in to, to better highlight those strengths. Uh, that's everybody. That's um, the offensive line, that's the running backs, that's in the run game. So all of those things, um, again, we have the ability to, to do a lot of different stuff and, and we have to find um, some things that we're good at too. You know, and I think we found a few things we're good at and we got to keep finding things that we can do better. Um, we can put guys in better spots. So yeah, the, the number of plays is never going to be the issue. It's going to be how well we, we execute those plays and um, how they fit our player skill set. And so that's a that's our process that we're kind of weekly going through right now is uh, finding ways to do that. When you're not, exec when you're not executing certain stuff mm -hmm. well, like how quickly can you get a handle on that in a game <laughs> and know to erase certain stuff? Or, or Pretty quickly. I mean, we've, we've sort of, it's it's an ebb and flow. It happens on a on a a week to week basis for sure. And, and there's, there's things on the other side that you look at too. There's defensive scheme and what's good against that scheme as well. Um, what type of game do you have to play versus the holistic picture of the team? You know, what, what's their offense and defense look like? How, what style of game do we have to play to win this week? And uh, like I said before, it's always a week to week league and there's always things uh, that come up with how the style of play that you play with each week. Um, so that that's all part of the factor on, on how you decide what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Um, but we've we've definitely had things that we've we've not uh, leaned much into because I don't think they're our strengths. And there's um, some other things that we've leaned more into because I think we're good at it. But um, got to keep finding more of those because again, we got to score more than 17 points um, to put ourselves a chance to win games. Sure, I will. I mean, I, I guess uh, given what you saw last year with him and then all the changes, mm -hmm. coaching staff, personnel, etc. Are you, I guess, surprised that, that most of his numbers have gone the other direction from last year, that he's not, you know, numbers-wise anyway, not even playing mm -hmm. as well as last year? Is that Again, I don't, I don't really look too much at that. I'm trying to see how he can best play now. Um, and, and certainly there's things that, that you know, we've, we've taken from what he's good at from last year, things he had success with that we've, we've implemented as well. So uh, we do our best to make sure that the things that he's good at we keep doing and um, things that – that he's not as comfortable with that we don't. And so um, whether it, it compares to last year or not, I don't really do too much of that. I just know that um, we're trying to put him in the best position to succeed now and, and so far um, haven't been as good as we, we need to be. The, the win on Monday night against the Jets, what, what stood out to you in that game and then just their season that they've been having so far? Um, well, it was a physical football game. Um, that was two really physical teams playing against each other. Uh, it was a really – I mean, well, hard fought game. I thought the Jets did some good things on offense. They they moved the ball um, pretty well. Had opportunities to win the game. Um, you know, they had two short missed field goals. Obviously, that hurt them. But um, yeah, they 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 do a really nice job on defense. There's not a lot of air in their defense. Um, they're a physical front. Um, their linebackers are really good players. Um, their scheme complements the the players really well. And then on offense, I think Josh Allen's playing. You know, I mean, that team is always going to be. Uh, Josh Allen and how how he's playing and how well uh, he, they're moving the ball and they're doing a great job offensively. They run the ball really well. Um, Josh is playing at a really high level. Um, he's not turning the ball over. Um, he is not taking sacks. He's he's they're playing a really uh, good brand of football there right now and and 
their their record would show that. So uh, we got a tough test, a really hard place to play. I think they're like 33 and seven or eight at home, you know, under under Coach McDermott and uh, great environment, but a really difficult one and, and one we have to go meet the challenge of. Uh, I let those guys handle most of that right now. I got enough on my plate. Um, um, that's that's you know we'll have conversations if those calls come in, but um, most of the, my focus is is fully on trying to get us ready to go play Buffalo and and all the games coming up after that too. So um, they handle the trade deadline. That's their that's the that's a personnel that's personnel's job. And um, if things come up, I'll be in the mix of it in the conversations. Uh, but other than that, I, I I'm not in there doing a whole lot of it. They're the ones you know if there's something going on, they're they're running that show. The word intent a couple times we're talking about mm -hmm. trying to get the ball to guys. How do you make things jive like when the intent isn't isn't coming to fruition? Um, you know, there's there's always play calls uh, that have a, a primary. There's always uh, reasons why a certain player is on that primary, and there's and then there's also a progression for the quarterback. And that's why I always say that I'm not. It's not Will's job to get guys the ball. It's my job to put them in position so they can get the ball. It's Will's job to, to read a read the progression or read the play and, and know where to go with the ball based on what the defense is doing. Um, so that's really what I mean by that. Like there's an there is intention in, in what we're trying to get done, who we're trying to get the ball to, when, why, all those things. Um, and that's that's really what I mean by that is that there's and there's always a um, there's always an intent to a play. You know what 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 coverage do we think we're going to get? How are we trying to attack that? And what routes are we using? What formations? I mean, that's what in, to me what's intent. When I say that's what I mean, um, and I don't know if that answers the question directly, but or is he allowed to to maybe make a choice based on how the defense plays out? Uh, both. There's both things. We have both styles uh, in the in the passing game. There's um, there's progression based where it's sort of start here and, and work back across. There's also um, plays where it's a, uh, for example, a pick a side style play where if you get this look, you work this side. You work that look. You know, you get this look, you work the other side. Um, so we have all of those things in the uh, passing game procedures. It's and it just depends on you know how you implement them, but we have all the different types of reads. And then you have your, your traditional play action reads where you're, uh, you, you know, you're flooding the side of the field or you're uh, trying to take a, a, a top down shot where it's, you know, you're looking deep and you're coming back down through your progression. And uh, so there's a lot of that different ways that we do that, but that's the uh, probably the best way to put it. Ryan, on the right side of the line, I know you've talked with that right tackle position kind of still being a week to week mm -hmm. thing, but at right guard, it looks like Dylan Radins has really kind of found his way um, what can you say about his development throughout the season and how he's played? Yeah, happy with where he's at and what he's shown. Um, really kind of sinking his teeth into playing right guard and, and gets better every week that we've played. Um, does some really nice things uh, in a run game and does some really nice things in pass pro. Um, he's one of the guys I think is, as you see that group growing, those guys are really starting to play well together. Um, you know, JC and Pete and Lloyd, and now you add Dylan in there. We. We got guys that are really starting to come on a bit up front, and that's really encouraging for us. Um, and to see Dylan start to thrive a bit at, at guard is um, is something that we needed from him, and he's done a really nice job. What are, what are the areas that you see Will advancing and offering hope to you that he's getting better as quarterback? Yeah, I think he's 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 seeing things well. He's understanding what's trying to get done. Um, you know, he's found the. He's found completions at a bit of a higher rate, um, which has been good. Now we just got to we got to find the the balance of being aggressive still and being smart with the football, uh, and then still completing the balls when they're there to be completed. And again, sometimes they're not exciting completions, but they're effective and efficient. Um, but we certainly got to find ways to get the ball, um, you know, down the field a little bit more and, and let him let him do things that he's good at as well. So. Um, there's been some growth in some of the intermediate and underneath things and decision making, and then we still got to keep that aggressiveness with them as well. There's always urgency for you guys, but is that increased this week, just given the facts of your record and two good teams coming up on the road? Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I don't. I would say, and I don't don't mean disrespect, but we our urgency never really changes. Um, it's something that you have to have in the NFL if you want to have a chance in every game you play. Um, there's there there can't be any deviation from your your you can't get up for one week and then think it's going to be easy the next week. It's it's a consistent um, a consistent 
work ethic, a consistent urgency every day. Um, and you have to keep your focus small during a season because there's just there's so much happening outside and there's other things that go on in the in the league and you have to sort of really narrow your focus to each team you play every week and um, our guys do a great job of that I, I love the way they practice I love the intensity they come to work with even today it's and look we're one and four it's not fun you know there's there's the guys want to be in in the mix and they want to win games and so do I um, and so it's a it's a credit to them that they still they come into work and work the way they do um, because it is it's it's challenging when you're when you're fighting like we are to get out of a hole um, that usually makes for a uh, an edge and an urgency that that is different than if you're four and one. You have the same urgency for, but you're playing for something different. We're trying to fight our way out of a hole right now, and um, the urgency still remains the same. Oh yeah, kind of yeah, absolutely. I talked to Calvin all the time. Um, yeah, he was he was great, and I told him I my message to him was was simple: is that um, I understand frustration, and I'm doing everything I can to to continue to keep getting you going and get you active and, and uh, early in games, late in games, whenever that may be. Um, I love Calvin's passion. I love the way he plays. I love the way he practices. All those things have, are, are great. And I, you know, I think we're on the same page. He's, he's, um, he's everything you want. And, and the guys in, and the guys in our locker room, he's, he's passionate and he wants to win. And, and I sure as heck want him to be a huge part of what we're doing. So I think we're, we're both on the same page. Are you, um, preparing for the Bills offense, but what's it like from a preparation standpoint when they trade for a player like Amari Cooper and mm -hmm. wondering how they're going to maybe utilize him right out of the gate? Yeah, those are just question marks. You know, you never really know how quickly a guy will pick up. You know, they usually have a limited package early as they start to build, um, probably similar to how Ernest was when he got here. You know, you they're introduced to, to bits and pieces, and they play some. And, and look, he may play the whole game. Uh, and we'll be ready for it. I mean, it, Amari's played for a while in this league, so so we know what he's capable of and the type of player he is. And so how they use him, you know, remains to be seen. But uh, we know what his strengths are and the things that he's done well over his career. And, um, you know, we'll be ready for, for whatever it is whenever he's in the game that uh, what he's capable of doing. Based on your quarterback experience, do you, mm -hmm. do you think Will's likely to, to have a jump off, off of a, a play or a game or continued kind of incremental improvement? Uh, I think there's both things are possible. Um, the incremental improvement is is expected, um, but sometimes when you have a, when you have a good game and your confidence jumps and you hit a couple things that you've been working on and um, it can turn quickly and you can you can really find a better rhythm uh, when your confidence picks up and so hopefully for him we get a chance to do that um, so I I think the incremental process is the one that I'm the most uh, encouraged by the little things um, but then there's also that part where you'd love to see you know have a big game and connect on a bunch of throws and, and feel really good about uh, where he's at and sometimes that does propel you it's sort of like turnovers you know you get you get one you get two and all of a sudden you get five and it's there's a momentum factor and a confidence factor to it for sure. When you reflect on the, the DeMar Hamlin incident being there a couple of years ago, just kind yeah. of what are the memories of him getting to play against him this week? What's kind of the Oh man, what a what an incredible um, story for him and, and really cool just having been a, been there that night and and seeing the faces and feeling those feelings in that in that moment. Um, to see him starting and playing football is remarkable. Um, Really, really, really cool for him, for that organization, um, and for you know there was a lot of people that did their job at a really high level that night, and uh, that was that was pretty cool to see, and to see the you know a year and a half later, two years later, to, to see him playing football the way he's playing is awesome. And earlier about the highs and lows adversity quarterbacks face all throughout a season, and you've been very open with us about where your mind's been at in certain weeks after certain games. Where's your confidence level at right now at this point in the season and following that, that tough loss Sunday? Hi. I feel like it's always been that. I think after the game, I made the comment. I found myself in a tough spot after the Miami game, just dealing with the injury and all that. And I was disappointed how I let myself dip for that brief period of time. But I feel like I'm back, and I'm not going to let myself lose that again. I think the second you lose that edge, um, it's hard to come back from. And you uh, you got to just maintain that to go out there and have the confidence. and. My uh, mindset to just do what you're capable of. So that's what I'm uh, making sure that I remind myself every day, regardless of what my you know box score or stat line looks like. That I know who I am at the end of the day. Numbers or whatever else, whoever anyone says has to say, doesn't define me. What are you you're building on Will, what are, what are some things that you look at in your in your numbers, your game, whatever, and say, okay, I see a little bit of progress here, and I can I can build on that. 
Uh, I'd like to hit some more deep shots. I mean, I feel like I've, my deep ball accuracy is one of my strong suits, and it just hasn't showed up on tape this year, and that's uh, disappointing for me. So just finding ways to put myself in a better position to be able to get those balls off um, and just making those plays. I'm not going to search for those and try to push and you know throw it up when it's not necessary, but the lack of completions down the field is, um, you know, I get that fixed. Well, are there some things that you're, that you're doing well right now, maybe even in relation to last year? What am I doing well, you're saying? Right, exactly. I think I'm just seeing the field better. I think my understanding of the defense of last year, a lot of times I'm just like, all right, you know, let's see how this goes, you know, whoever comes open. But I really feel like I have, you know, understanding of coverages that I'm seeing and thus what our best options are for those coverages. So. Just a better student of the game, I feel like, and I feel more prepared going out there on Sundays. You're well, talking about Monday. the deep balls, too. Your shoulder is feeling fine, and you feel like that's not going to prevent you from some of those balls that you might want to be able to throw. Yeah, I know. We're working. It's going to be a process coming back from it. Um, I'm, I'm in a pretty good spot. And um, but yeah, I just had to feel out how I came out of the game Sunday and hopefully you know, get, get to a point where I feel really good going into the, this Sunday. Brian said Monday that you and the whole team could probably use a little uplifting of confidence, though, in terms of seeing the fruits of your labor be validated, that the hard work translating into success on the field. What, what's kind of your perspective on that? 100%. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's important to celebrate the little victories. And, uh, you know, we, we felt awesome after that Miami game. But, you know, that's, that's really the only small victory we've had in, the, in a while. So it's, 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 it's huge for us to get wins and to, and to stack that confidence. So, you know, hopefully we can get that done on Sunday. And, you know, we feel like a statement win, you know, against a team like that would be, would be great for our confidence. Do you feel like that seeing fruits of the labor kind of would get you in a better rhythm and, and keeping you going as, a, as opposed to <coughs> how sometimes the, the game has started well, but not necessarily been able to sustain the momentum? Sure, yeah. No, I think anytime you see the results of something that you've worked so freaking hard at, um, it makes you feel good and it makes you and it gives you more confidence and um of going out there and doing it again. So we got a lot of things that we know we're capable of that we haven't just shown on the, on game day. So, you know, once we start getting those things on tape, it gives us the confidence that we know we can do it and we can do it at a higher and more consistent basis. Calvin was still for eight on the target Sunday, caught a third of the passes you guys have thrown in his direction this season. How much of that do you think is, is you being off target to him? Uh, I don't know. Off the top of my head, they definitely could have thrown some better balls to them here and there. Um, but, you know, it's not something that we can point fingers at or wh whose fault it is. But he knows, you know, I can be better. I know he can be better. And we all know we can be better at everything that we're doing. And we're all just trying to work as hard as we can to get those numbers up and trust that, you know, the connection that we know is can be you know fruitful for us is gonna is gonna get there. You had a chance to talk to Brian Rob, the the guy. Who I did. Yeah, I I didn't even know that that had happened until after the game. I obviously reached for the first down. I thought they were deliberating about if it was a first down or not. We're sitting there in the huddle, like what's going on? No idea that that was going on at all. Um, I didn't know if I had a first down. I pop up. I'm ready for third down. I don't know what happened behind me, and uh, found out that it was B Rob and felt for him. I know he had surgery today. I texted him the other day just to check in. Um, hoping him, you know, a speedy recovery. Did you get together with, with Calvin after? Because Calvin was, was frustrated after the game. Is it, is, was that a situation you guys piled on after that one? Oh, we talked the next day. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think that he is every right in the world to be frustrated. I think we all can be frustrated, but we just can't let that, you know, go into the next day. Like in the moment, it's okay to have those feelings, but we know, like. In order to get to where we want to, we can't let those feelings affect how we come to work and how we practice. Isn't that the kind of energy, though, you kind of want from the wide receiver? You know, once the ball, once the ball. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I would be concerned if he was okay with how, you know, how, his, how it's been going for him. And, um, you know, he's confident in his ability. He wants to go out there and ball. We know he's a baller, and we got to put the ball in his hands. Um, not really. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, trust what I'm seeing, trust my coaching, just run the offense how it is, you know, supposed to be run. And obviously that comes with whatever flair that the quarterback brings to it. Um, and I'm going to just continue to get to know this offense and 
bring my flair to it when I feel appropriate. And um, but like I said before, like if this isn't a time for us to just start saying like we got to just start saying screw it and, and go bombs away. You know, we're we are playing within the offense still. And I'm going to keep trusting what I'm seeing and making the throws and plays that I feel are appropriate. Will, has the contrast between system last year and this been any more than, than you anticipated? No. no, nothing jarring. No, I mean, definitely new and different, but nothing that has uh, made me think twice. What's the comfort level as you know, you've now got you know, five weeks into the season, essentially? Like really high. Seriously, like the last couple of game plans, I know it's also been like carryover of stuff that we've had in previous game plans that we haven't come off the call sheet. But like, obviously not really, but I feel like I could have gone out there on Thursday and played those games because we, we've just installed those plays. Like, uh, other than maybe a few game plan plays, like we already know all these plays. We can go out there and practice them without even an install meeting on them. So that's cool. Um, seeing the game plan and really only having to install a few looks for the game plan, so. When you watch that, did you feel like you checked down or went off too often? The pass game you're saying? Uh, I thought for the most part I was taking the throws that are there. You know, I put Josh in a tough spot, throwing him. I kind of one 2 one him into a cloud corner, getting him sawed off, so that was tough. Um, uh, and then might have just missed the backside of a progression. But other than that, I felt like did a decent job of just putting the ball in play. And just to, it's, it's tough when you're in the rhythm of a game like that where you don't get as many opportunities as you would hope. I mean... I, think, I don't think there are even two total possessions in the third quarter. And we knew that it was going to be that type of game where it was going to be just like take the plays that are there, death by a thousand cuts. Like they're not going to let you get too much over the top just with the style of defense they play. Um, but we had a whole bunch of plays we would have loved to get off the call sheet. But sometimes the game doesn't play that way. And we got to be better with the opportunities that we have. Josh Allen, a guy that maybe you've admired from afar and looking forward to matching up against him? Yeah, love his, love his game, love him as a person. Um, done a lot of great things and has developed a lot. Uh, throughout his time in the NFL. So, um, yeah, excited to see him uh, on Sunday. You still spend some spare time maybe working through the shoulder? You feel like you've made a little progress in a, in a week? Um, yeah, I'm grinding my tail off in there. It's not like a it's over type thing. It'd probably be something I'm dealing with here for a little bit. And hopefully we can grind through it and get me to a spot where I'm feeling 100%. So, but uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, doing the best I can with every, everything that they're having me do. What stands out when you look at Buffalo's defense? A lot of different looks. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get. Like, they got everything. Um, they're going to disguise in all different types of ways that they, that they can. Um, you know, don't, don't, you don't assume what you see pre-snap. So what's going to happen post-snap? And it's just going to be a lot of, just understanding where their safeties and their secondary, second-level players are going to be at post-snap to know what the coverage is and thus what our options are. So, um, yeah, they got great players across the board. I know their nickel and their safety are back from injury now too, so that's that's um, that's going to be big for them. And you know they've been, they, I think, fifth year in their system or something like that. So they they know each other well. They know the ins and outs of it. They know the different, um, you know, looks that they're looking for. So I'm excited to battle against them. They talk a lot about the atmosphere there at the stadium. Like, what if what have you been told about? You know that stadium and those fans and you know the yeah. Bills Mafia and all that. Yeah, it's special. You know that's uh, they they make it. A tough environment to play there, and obviously they've been rolling the last handful of years, and th that fan base has been right by, right by their side the whole way. Um, you know, I'm excited to get up there, being from the Northeast, feeling some cool weather for the first time this year, so that'll be nice. Um, and uh, yeah, no, they got a winning culture up there. You know, it's uh, it's something that makes it exciting to go up and try to you know beat them, put a frown on their faces. Well, you played in a lot of hostile road environments, obviously, in, in college, certainly. How much do you enjoy the opportunity like, to sort of go up there and like, silence a crowd like that? It's just, yeah, it's fun. It's part of, it's, you know, when you get to go on the road, uh, there's, there's a specialty of, you know, really being on your own. You and everybody else in the team, it's just you guys, you know, in the hotel uh, the night before, day of, like getting ready for it. It's, it's like that you against the world mentality. And pulling up to the stadium that, you know, might, might not have ever been to in an unfamiliar environment with, People yelling, screaming at you, uh, get you juiced up. So I'm excited for it. Uh, they'll, they'll, I know we know that they're going to throw everything that they can at us, those Bills fans, and hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to be ready for it. Well, we talked to Callahan about the urgency. He said, you know, it's always there, but there might be a different tone to it given the record and these next two tough road opponents. What's your take on the, the urgency going into a week like this? Yeah, I think um, operationally, just in and out of the huddle too. That's something we saw on this past Sunday that wasn't up to our standard and. With all the stuff that we do, with all the motions and everything, and different types of looks we're going to give to the defense, like we need to, you know, 
get up and set on the line of scrimmage with more than 15 seconds to go. We can't be breaking the huddle, you know, approaching the line with six, seven seconds without even having to or being able to operate what we want to for the play. Um, so it's, it's working through this week of getting the substitutions game like, making sure that we're getting in and out of the huddle with urgency. Um, and uh, I think that mindset in the huddle, in and out of the huddle, should take its you know, course throughout everything else that we're doing in the building and how we approach it. So um, we didn't have the best day of practice today. We all knew that. Uh, we want to come out tomorrow and make sure that that urgency and what we put out there on tape is more to our standards. So opportunity to, to do that tomorrow. What's the about Tony Pollard since he's been here? How do you think he's been able to have the success he's had so far? Yeah, I'm just glad he's on our team. You know, he's a, he's a heck of a player. He, you know, has the right mindset. He's got the right attitude with everything he does. He's a leader. Um, he's on his stuff. Uh, he's, he's back there helping guys however that he can and uh, makes big plays on Sunday, which is, you know, the most important thing. So that <laughs> that third and draw, I remember we broke the huddle, you know, third and 20. And obviously me too, like, we're, and every, anytime you're handing the ball off on third down, you're like, oh, like what are we doing here? But, you know, um, we were playing for a field goal and the receivers were breaking are kind of like, oh, let's try to take a shot. And then he pops it and I was like, that's, that's why you don't get, that's why you don't sigh when we, when we call a draw, we got TP, you know, so that was cool to see um, for him to bust one like that. And, you know, there's going to be a lot more runs like that this year.